Yo! Everyone, and welcome to an IAM fanfic for you. Today, we're going to explore an interesting hypothetical scenario of what if Issei, our protagonist, was the true son of Lucifer Morningstar. What can I say? Issei discovers his true family, he is Lucifer's son and Mickey's son, who in this story will be a pure-blooded devil, too. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Now, let's start to part 1. Chapter 1 The Return of the Morning Star. Excuse me, maid. Can you please get me my clothes? I am going to the human world, said the unknown man. Oh, right, I don't have anyone anymore. Maybe I should join back in with the supernatural world. Would you allow me to mother? Was all the unknown man thought about. As he dressed up in his school clothes, he felt a sense of loneliness. I am all alone now. I have to get used to it. I miss you, mom. I hope I can make you proud by attending school in that town you loved so much in your last years. With a heavy heart, he headed straight to the kitchen to prepare his breakfast and lunch for school. Even after all these years, I still can't make this dish like you did. I wonder what I am missing. Anyway, it's still nice, and it gives me the energy I need for the day. Damn, I am running late for my first day of school. He rushed out of the house and turned the corner, only to find two people waiting at the front gate. As he got closer, the two people looked at him and formed a warm smile on their faces. Hello, you must be the new student, said the unknown woman who pushed up her glasses. Yep, that's me, the only new student who is also late on his first day of school, and for that, I am very sorry. It won't happen again, Miss bowing to them. It's alright, I'll let you off this one time, but don't do it again. Hi miss, it won't happen again. I swear it upon the god before confirming in his head that these two are devils, as he can see them slightly hurt by the use of god name. My name is Sauna Shatori, and this is my best friend Tsubaki Shinra. We are a part of the student council here. Also, here is your timetable. Thank you very much, Miss Citri. I must be off now, I do not want to be too late for my class now, do I? I gave them a bow. Yes, you are right, before that, what is your name? Sauna asked with a worried face because he knew her real name for some reason. My name is Issei Haidu, but you can call me Issei, said Issei with a slight smirk, but no one saw it, luckily, as he walked off to class. Should we tell Riaz about this said Tsubaki with a worried look? Let's keep it to ourselves for now. Said Sauna. Dust who are you, Issei Haidu? I will work it out one way or another. Scene change Issei classroom. Am more devils in here. What would happen if I attacked one who would come? Would it be Serafo or would it be my friend Serzich's? Oh well, I won't look into that now because I have a class to get to. Knocking on the door to his class. One moment, please, class, quiet down now. The door to the classroom opens, reviling a beautiful young woman who looks to be in her early twenties with silver hair. Hello, you must be the new student. I've heard so much about you, you do realize that you are late on your first day, said the teacher. Sorry, miss, taking the teacher's hand and kissing it. I couldn't sleep that much last night as I was nervous about coming to a new school, it won't happen again, said Issei as he bowed down to the teacher, who now had a small bush on her face. Well, as long as it won't punish you this time, come in and introduce yourself to the class, said the teacher. Hi, said Issei. Hello everyone. My name is Issei Haidu, and I am 17 years old. I hope we can be friends, said Issei as he bowed to the class with a gentleman's grace, making some girls, including the teacher, blush their faces bright red. Now then, any questions for Issei before we begin classes? Do you have a girlfriend? Asked one of the girls. What part of the woman's body do you like the most? Asked one of the boys, getting a lot of death glares from the girls. Well, I'll answer those questions in order one. I currently don't have a girlfriend, and I hate to say this to all lovely girls. Still, if anyone has a chance with me, it would be the teacher, as I like older women more than people my age. Now, for the second one, I'm going to go ahead and assume you are a pervert. If you want to get a girl, I will keep that in check, women like a bit of pervertedness, but not too much. Find the right balance for the girl you are looking at, also, if she says she hates perverts, she is lying to you. That means she likes what you are doing, do it to her, or it could mean stop looking at me like that, you have to try and work this out, it's not hard, if you like, I can try and teach you the subtly sense of it. Oh damn, he is a gentleman, said a few girls. Teach us, oh great one, said the boys. Alright, class, settle down now, Issei. You can sit at the back by the window, trying to hide her blush. Time skip lunch time. Man, this is a nice place to sit and eat my meal. It's a shame that my two best friends can't be here with me. I miss you, feel you too, red man, oh well, can't keep being in the past. I stand up and brush myself off and feel someone is watching me. I looked in the direction I thought it was coming from, and it was a girl with red hair and crimson eyes. I wonder if she is related to him, I'll figure it out soon. 
As I just way my hand at her and walked back to my classroom. Who was that boy? His name is Issei Haidu, and he is a second year 17 years old. Why has he caught your eye, Riaz? Maybe he could get me out of my problem, get Kanako to watch him, and bring Kaib here. I have work for him to do. At once Riaz. Dust who are you, Issei Haidu? Time skip end of the day. It sucks that I couldn't find anyone that genuinely interests me today. I do not want to come back to the supernatural just yet, not until I find the person who killed my mother is in my hands, begging me for life. I will show no mercy for that person, I will show the world that I am the only true descend of Lucifer. Those fake wannabes are a decrease of the name Lucifer. Hmm, a fallen. Is it one of my uncle's followers or Rouge? I can find out what they want. It might be interesting to see what that hair girl wants from me, sending one of her peerage members after me. Hello, are you a say hi do? Said the unknown girl. Yep, that's me. What can I do for such a beautiful angle as you? Let's see if she gets the hint of that. Well, I noticed you often walk past here, so I wondered if you'd like to go out with me. Yeah, sure, I'll go out with you. What's your name? You know mine, but I don't know your name. Let's see if she gives me her real name or fake name. Fallen, let's play your game. My name is Amano Ikma. Ikma is a beautiful name for an angel such as you, how does this Saturday sound for our first date? Slightly smirking as he could see that being called an angel terrified her. Yes, that sounds lovely. I shall see you this Saturday at noon by the mall, said Ikma. Lovely, I shall see you then, Ikma, said Issei. As he left the bridge, he looked towards the bush the confident cat was watching. He smirked at her, terrifying her massively and whispering to himself. Run along now, cat, and tell your master what you saw her. Running from the scene, that cat ran as if her life depended on it. She got to the orc and told Rias everything she saw. She also got scared about who he was, but kept to her plan of making him her servant. Time skipped to Saturday noon. We can see Issei just showing him for the date when a familiar comes up to him and gives him a summing circle, and he just smiles and thinks, so that is how she will play it, okay, I'll use it. Issei. Shouted. Ikma smiles at him. Sorry did I make you wait long, said Ikma. No, you didn't. I've only been here for a few minutes. Shall we go? Yes, said Ikma, slightly blushing at him. So I thought we could go to the mall first, and then to a small cafe I like visiting occasionally. Then we can go to the amusement park and go on some of the rides, and then finish the date at the park, how does that sound? Said Issei. Sounds lovely, Issei, said Ikma with a blush now showing that he put a lot more thought into it than she thought he would. Well, let's go then, she said, taking her hand and walking towards the mall. Is anything taking your liking to Ikma? I don't mind getting you something. Yes, they are, that pink band would look lovely on my hand, don't you think? She asked shyly. If that is what my angle would like, then I shall get it for you, picking up the band and walking over to the till to get it paid for. Here you go, beautiful, helps to put it on her. Thanks for this, it looks amazing on me, Ikma asserted with a confident grin. My pleasure, my angel, Issei responded assertively. Let's head to the cafe now. They sell the best cake in town at this time, and I am certain that you will love it, Issei continued, sounding even more assertive. Time skip location small cafe. Hello, what can I get you to? The waitress asked with a smile. I shall have my usual if you please, said Issei with a smile. Very well, Issei, I shall get that for you right away, what would your girlfriend be having? Asked the waitress. What would you like, my dear? Said Issei. I'll have the strawberry slice, please, said Ikma. Very well, if you two would like to go to your seats, I shall bring them over to you once I have gotten them ready for you, said the waitress with a warm smile. Thank you, sweetie. I'll make sure to tip you as always. He gave a wink at the waitress, slightly showing his devil side to Ikma to see if she notices. Thank you, Issei, said the waitress, blushing a bit, not going unnoticed by Ikma, who now had a pout on her face. Thank you, Issei, said the waitress, blushing a bit, not going unnoticed by Ikma, who now had a pout on her face. Seeing this, Issei grabs her cheek and says. Issei gently took Ikma's hand and led her to his usual spot at the cafe. You are my angel. I will always love you. Don't worry about that, he said, gazing into her eyes with affection. Ikma blushed at his words and looked away. Issei noticed her reaction and grinned mischievously. So, what does my beloved angel like doing for fun? He asked. I like reading books and exploring nature, Ikma replied, her blush deepening. Issei's grin widened. Oh, you're so cute, my little nature lover. I'll remember that for the rest of my life, he said, patting her hand. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of their cakes and drinks, served by a friendly waitress. Issei offered to pay, but the waitress informed them that their order was on the house, courtesy of the manager. Issei raised an eyebrow and glanced at the counter, where the manager was watching them. 
He gave her a sly wink and mouth, I'll come back soon and have a talk with you, before turning back to Ikma with a smile. Thank you for this. I'll come back for more cake and my favorite coffee, Issei said, savoring the sweet taste of the dessert. Ikma smiled and leaned closer to him, feeling grateful for the moment they were sharing together. As Issei glanced at his watch, he realized that it was almost time to head to the amusement park. We better hurry if we want to get there early, he said, quickly downing his coffee and finishing the last bit of cake. However, in his haste, he started to choke on his food. Ikma was quick to react, firmly patting his back and dislodging whatever was stuck, allowing him to breathe again. Thank you, my guardian angel, for saving my life, Issei said gratefully, noticing that Ikma had also finished her cake and drink, indicating that it was time to leave a tip for the manager and waitress. As they walked up to the counter, Issei left a generous $20 tip along with his phone number for the manager, adding a kiss next to it. Holding hands, the two of them headed off to the amusement park, excited for the adventures that awaited them. Time skip entrance for the amusement park. As the couple strolled into the park, they took a moment to soak in the sights and sounds. Issei couldn't help but admire Ikma's beauty as she looked around with a sparkle in her eye. He had planned on taking her to the Ferris wheel at the end of their visit, but he couldn't resist asking her where she wanted to go first. So, Ikma, where would you like to start? The merry-go-round, perhaps? Issei asked with a smile. Ikma blushed and nodded shyly. I've always wanted to ride one, but my father never approved, she admitted. Issei gently lifted Ikma's chin and planted a soft kiss on her cheek. Don't worry, my precious angel. We can ride the merry-go-round as often as you like, he said, gazing into her beautiful eyes. Merry-go-round. Issei and Ikma walked towards the merry-go-round, the colorful lights and music adding to the excitement. As they approached the ticket collector, Issei politely requested two tickets. The ticket collector, who introduced himself as Aza, warned the kids about the safety rules while handing over the tickets. Remember not to do anything silly, hold on to the bar at all times, and don't go trying to impress your girlfriend. You can get hurt very easily on here. Issei assured the ticket collector that he wouldn't do anything silly to impress his girlfriend, giving a charming smile that made Ikma blush. However, Issei's words caught the attention of someone who was observing them a man with black hair, golden bangs, and a black goatee. The man was Issei's uncle, checking in on one of his subordinates. He was surprised to see Issei on a date with his subordinate and made a mental note to keep an eye on them, fearing that this could lead to another great war. Unbeknownst to him, Issei had already recognized his uncle and smiled to himself at seeing him after so long. Ikma, who had been watching the exchange between Issei and the ticket collector, playfully called Issei a baka, fool. Issei took her hand and helped her onto the merry-go-round, pointing towards the seat next to him. Here you go, you'll take the one next to you, and we can wait for it to start to move again, he said with a smile. After a little while, a few more people get on. Then the ticket master says. Alrighty all, hold on tight. We are now going to start the merry-go-round. Remember what I told you all, said the ticket master Aza. As the merry-go-round starts, the music begins to play, Ikma and Issei ride the merry-go-round, laughing and smiling at each other as they go around a few times. Ikma can't help but wonder if she still wants to go through with her plan to eradicate Issei at the end of their date. Issei has done everything in his power to make her happy, and he succeeded. Ikma has started developing real feelings for Issei, but she knows she must stick to her plan. This saddens her because Issei is the first person who has ever cared for her well-being besides her parents. As the merry-go-round comes to a stop, they both look at each other and smile, feeling a little bashful. Did you have fun, beautiful? Issei asks Ikma. Ikma spoke with a hint of excitement in her voice, I did. I had such a great time. I don't understand why my father never allowed me to go before. It was a lot of fun, darling. She walked up to him and lightly kissed his cheek, causing him to blush deeply. Little did they know that someone had been watching them from a distance. The person was unhappy about being called a fool and seeing his daughter kissing a boy who was not him. He sternly warned to say, just because you are my brother's son, it doesn't give you the right to do whatever you please. You will face consequences for your actions soon, young man. Issei noticed this and worriedly smiled, not being seen by anyone thankful. Issei and Ikma are having a lovely time together, enjoying each other's company and the thrill of the amusement park. Issei suggests they go on the roller coaster, but makes sure to check in with Ikma first to ensure they're comfortable with the idea. Ikma happily agrees, taking Issei's hand and blushing with excitement. Together, they make their way to the roller coaster, eager to experience the adrenaline rush and make more memories. Roller coaster. As Issei and Ikma make their way over to the roller coaster, Issei starts a conversation. All my life, this has been one of my best dates, Ikma. I hope we can do this again soon, as I think I have fallen for you, ha, a man who has fallen for an angle, said Issei with a blush and a smile. It has been the same for me, darling. 
I hope we can repeat this soon as I have also enjoyed this time, and I don't wish for it to end anytime soon, said Ikma, as she got closer to his say and clung to his hand. As they walk on the roller coaster, everyone stops and stares at the couple, admiring the young couple looking perfect together. As an old couple approaches the young couple, they greet them. The older man with long gray hair and a matching beard looked back on his youth with fondness. Ah, to be young and in love, he mused. Turning to his companion, he asked, do you remember this feeling, love? The older woman, with her hair tied in a regal style and dressed in what looked like old fabric, smiled warmly. Yes, she replied, I do remember. I used to do many daring things back then, all in the name of love. Issei grinned at the old couple's banter, grateful for their company as he and his date made their way towards the roller coaster. Thank you for the kind words, though I must admit it must be quite hard to deal with an old crow sometimes, ma'am, he said playfully, prompting a chuckle from the old man. As sharp as your old man, alrighty kid, it would seem the Lucifer clan isn't dead after all, the old man whispered to himself, his eyes shining with recognition. Brat, I may be old, but I can still outdrink a little whippersnapper like you, he declared, unwavering confidence. Issei smirked in response. Yes, you probably could, old crow. I guess we will have to find out one day, won't we? He said, his eyes shining with amusement. The older woman rolled her eyes at their antics. Ignore him, dear. He's just cranky because he hasn't had his milk yet. I hope you two have a lovely date. I'll be rooting for you, she said with a smirk. As Issei and his date left the restaurant, the old couple remained behind, exchanging knowing glances. That was Lucifer's son, wasn't it? The old man hushed to his wife. Yes, it was, an unknown man replied, his presence unnoticed until then. Ah, so you're the crow. I could sense you but couldn't see you watching them. Interesting, very interesting, the old man said, turning to face the stranger. So, what can we do for you, fallen angel? All I wish to know is what Aden, the great god of the north, is doing down here. The fallen angel asked his smile sly. Well, I felt a familiar presence here, so I thought I would come and check it out. But finding out he had another son with more power than both combined is amazing. He may very well be the strongest Lucifer in history. So, what are you doing here, Azazel? Aden replied, his tone curious. I came for the same reason and to see why my subordinate is with him, but something might be wrong with her. I can sense something on her but can't tell what yet. Maybe you can see, Frigg. After all, you have a natural gift with magic of all types but dragons. So, what are your thoughts? Azazel explained, his expression troubled. Someone has put a spell on her to follow orders to the Asbol. She can't break it as she isn't strong enough, and I'm sure the young boy can sense it, too. I wonder who might be behind all this, Frigg said with a worried frown. Don't worry, dear. I'm sure the young Lucifer can handle whatever might come his way. But just in case, maybe we could follow them and ensure they have a nice date. After all, it's not every day you see a fallen and a devil getting along now, do we? Auden said with a grin, his eyes twinkling mischievously. Scene changed the roller coaster. Issei and Ikma were excited and nervous as they approached the roller coaster. As they came on the ride, Issei confidently approached the ticket booth and purchased their tickets, ensuring they got the best seats. As they took their seats on the roller coaster, Issei's face lit up with excitement, while Ikma had a more hesitant expression. She wasn't sure if she was ready for the ride, but she didn't want to disappoint Issei. However, it was clear that Issei was aware of her apprehension, and he immediately took her hand, holding it tightly to reassure her. As the roller coaster started moving, the initial climb up the first hill was slow and steady, giving them time to take in the beautiful scenery. As they reached the top, Ikma's expression changed from worry to pure exhilaration. The cart began to descend, and the speed picked up rapidly, causing her hair to whip around wildly. Issei and Ikma screamed as the roller coaster went around the track a few times, the adrenaline pumping through their veins. Issei's smile never wavered, and Ikma's expression shifted from worry to excitement. As the ride finally stopped, they both took moments to catch their breath and appreciate the experience. Issei and Ikma got off the ride, feeling grateful for the incredible experience they had just shared. Ikma couldn't stop talking about all the twists and turns, while Issei just grinned and laughed, happy to have shared the experience with her. Ferris Wheel as Issei and Ikma approached a Ferris wheel, Ikma's eyes lit up like a light bulb at the thought of Issei being so romantic on their first date. A slight blush crept up her face, which didn't go unnoticed by her father Issei. Issei held onto Ikma's hand tightly as he ordered the tickets for the Ferris wheel. Come on, darling, we need to hurry to get the best seats, said Issei as he walked with Ikma to the Ferris wheel gates. They stepped into the first cart and closed the door behind them. Issei sat down with Ikma on the opposite side of him. You're so beautiful, dear. I hope we can have more fun dates in the future, said Issei as he approached Ikma and kissed her cheek, making the fallen angel blush bright red. Don't say such silly things, babe. 
I'm not going to leave you anytime soon, said Ikma, playfully hitting Asay's arm. Everyone, get ready as the Ferris wheel will start to go up soon, so get a seat as soon as one comes down, said the Ferris wheel worker with a smile. Get ready, dear, because when we get to the top, I want to ask you something, said Asay with a smile and a grin. Suddenly, the Ferris wheel started to move, and people got on slowly. The Ferris wheel soon reached the top, stopping as if something had gone wrong. A barrier was made, shocking Ikma. Issei, be careful. I need to tell you who I am, said Ikma, but she was cut short by Issei, who put one finger on her mouth, stopping her from speaking. No, I need to explain many things, my dear Rainer, said Issei, shocking Ikma. How did you know my name? said Ikma with a worried look. I saw you many times with my uncle in the Grigori. Did you think I would forget such a pretty face as yours? said Issei. Let me introduce myself. My name is Issei Satan Lucifer, the third son of Satan Lucifer. But I am more powerful than both of my older brothers. Issei's devil wings sprouted from his back, making many people nervous. With this, Issei made his first unofficial return to the supernatural world. Elsewhere in the underworld, a maid can be seen running down a hallway in what appears to be a big house. Suddenly, the maid stops at a big door and barges in, shocking the men and women inside. That's him. I knew it. He's still alive. I knew he wouldn't abandon me, said the teary-eyed maid, falling to her knees. The man approached the maid, touched her shoulder, and spoke softly. There must have been a reason, Grafia. You and I both know he loved you so much that he wouldn't abandon you without a good enough reason. So, I say we wait until he wants to return. I have a feeling that it will be soon as he is currently in the location of my little sister, said the man with a pleased face. My son is right. We both know Lucifer Sama wouldn't want to be away from you. He loved you too much for that, said the unknown woman. Thank you, Serziches and Venelana. I'm just worried about him. After all, it has been more than 500 years since we last saw him, said the now emotional maid, Grafia. Ara ara, it would seem you miss him a lot, Fia. What do you think he would say right now if he were here? Said Venelana. He would probably make a joke or something, and Grafia here would pinch his cheek and tell him to act his age or something, said Serziches with a smirk, making Grafia blush and smile, knowing it was true. Baka, said Grafia, playfully hitting Serziches' arm. In heaven, two unknown male angels were observing Issei's display of power. They were impressed but also concerned about their nephew's abilities. Brother, is that who I think it is, or is our nephew realizing his power? Said the first angel. I believe it is our young nephew. I can sense his unique power, which he inherited from his father and mother, said the second angel. Brother, is that our nephew's power? Said a female angel, walking through the open door. It is sister. We should keep an eye on him as he was very close to our father and still doesn't know of his death alongside his father. Maybe we should go and visit him soon, said the unknown male angel. He must be so lost right now. We could offer him comfort and guidance. After all, with both of our heavy hitters gone, we can no longer stand against some god factions like the Hindu pantheon, said the female angel. I think that is a good idea. With him as the leader of the devil factions, he could also lead the angel and fallen angels, using both devil and angel powers. But he also has fourteen wings, two of which are golden, said the male angel, shocking the other angels in the room. Wait, you are saying that our nephew has fourteen wings, two of which are golden? That is impossible, said one of the angels. You know we can't lie brother Raphael. If we did, we would turn into fallen angels, and I don't think father would want his most trusted angels to fall for a simple lie, said the male angel. You are right, Michael. I'm sorry for not trusting you, said Raphael. It's okay. All is forgiven. God bless you all, and unique to you, little nephew. May you find the peace you are looking for, said Michael with a smile. Elsewhere in the world, on top of a mountain, two powerful gods observed Issei's display of power. Do you sense that power, Shiva? asked a man. Yes, I do, Indra. It would seem he is not trying to hide anymore, said Shiva with a smile, knowing his friend would be back as soon as they could finally finish the talk they had started just before the factions went to war. Scene change with Issei and Rainer. Looking at Issei, she realized he was not just any ordinary devil. He was the third son of Satan Lucifer, and he had the potential to become even more powerful than his father. Issei's angelic and devil wings were a testament to his immense power. Rainer had never seen anything like it before. She was utterly shocked. Issei smiled, sensing her surprise. You seem to be in shock, Rainer. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. You're one of my uncle's followers, after all. Rainer nodded hesitantly. She didn't know what to make of this situation. But she knew that Issei was not someone to be taken lightly. She took a deep breath and gathered her thoughts. Well, I've been told to watch over you and see if you will become a threat to my leader's plans in the future. Issei raised an eyebrow. I see. And do you see me as a threat? 
Brainer hesitated for a moment before responding. I'm not sure yet. But I know you have a lot of potential, and my leader is scared of threats. Issei nodded slowly. I see. Well, I appreciate your honesty. I have plans, and I intend to see them through. Brainer nodded, understanding that Issei was a force to be reckoned with. She knew she had to keep a close eye on him, but she also knew he was not someone to be underestimated. If I'm being honest, I do, but I know anyone who has to join us won't stand a chance against you as you have 14 wings, and the most we have is 8 wings, whereas our leader has a total of 12 wings, but we haven't seen his face or anything, but I can tell you it isn't Azazel. Dad wants nothing more than peace and to reacres, scared gears, said Raynor, shocked as he was on a date with his uncle's daughter, which is why he saw his uncle looking angry at him earlier. Note to self. I need to apologize to my uncle after this. So what did you plan on doing at the end of this date? said Issei. I've been told to kill you as you have been deemed a threat to his plans and must be eliminated at all costs, even if I die, said Raynor. I see, and because you have a spell on you, it means you have to follow it, am I correct? said Issei as he saw Raynor nod's head. Well, that's easy. I can deal with two birds with one stone. I can find out what this devil wants with me. If that is okay with you, I can set you free from that spell, but that would mean you would have to become one of my servants. Before you say anything, I won't force you to do any tasks as I have yet returned to the supernatural world. But I will help you out with this, said Issei, smiling at Raynor. Okay, I will do this. I want to say sorry to daddy before I humiliate him even more with my actions, said Raynor. If I know uncle, he won't be humiliated by this. He will want to kill the man who has forced his little girl to do this, but uncle won't have a chance as I have now located my target that I must eliminate before my return to the world is known. Wait, you know who is behind this. Who is it? Said Raynor with a worried look. If I'm right, it will be the leader class fallen angle, known as Kakabiel, or is commonly known as the Star of God. I will have my vengeance against him. Even if it costs me my life, I will eliminate him. Said Issei with a devilish look on his face. So how are you going to do this then? Said Raynor with a confused face. Well, it's simple. I'm going to let the red-haired girl reincarnate me as her servant, but it won't work. But I'll make it look like it did and fool anyone who has a high level of power to her see it as such, too. I can secretly look for him and play a game with my friends for fun, said Issei with an amused look, grinning widely. Wait, you want me to kill you so she can do that? Shouted Raynor. Yes, I do, don't worry, you won't kill me. It will just look like it did. Issei's words hung in the air, and Raynor was taken aback. She had never met anyone like him someone who exuded such a strong and powerful aura. Issei's words hung in the air, and Raynor was taken aback. She had never met anyone like him someone who exuded such a strong and powerful aura. Now then, I believe it's time to end this date, don't you, love? Said Issei with a smile on his face. I think it would be appropriate to end it now as well said Raynor with a blush. Well, then I just get rid of this. Remove the barrier in the area and remove his wings and aura. The ferris wheel starts to move down, and Issei and Raynor get off of it and walk hand in hand to the park, where the date will end and Issei's game will begin. Park. Scene change park. I had a lovely time today, Issei. Thank you for this said Raynor. I had fun as well, Ikma. I hope we can do this again soon said Issei. I believe we can do but first can I ask you a question, said Ikma. What would that be? said Issei with a slight smirk, knowing full well what was about to happen. Will you die for me? asked Ikma. Sorry, what was that? said Issei. Will you die for me? said Ikma. Once she said that, she threw a light spear into Issei's chest. It was fun, Issei, but my boss gave me the orders to eliminate you as he sees you as a threat to his plans. Don't take this to heart, okay? said Ikma with a smile on her face. With that, Ikma left in a magical circle back to her base, but Issei was slowly dying from blood loss when the summing circle he got from the red-haired girl's familiar started to glow red and came out that same girl. Prisman red, just like your old friend, I knew it. She is your sister, thought Issei. Not today. I won't let you die today, said the unknown woman. Browse. Dry premium. The true son of Lucifer. I-E-M-P-E-R-O-R-E-D-W-A-R-D-1. Chapter 2. Getting ready for the Phoenix fight. 227, 36. I E M P E R O R E D W A R D 1. Slowly waking up from his sleep, Issei felt heavy on one side of his body, looking under the covers, Issei saw it was the red haired girl from last night. He noticed that she was naked and stopped looking, fearing that his friend and future wife had heard about this, he would be dead for sure, so he got up, noticing that it wasn't his house, and started to look around a bit, before he heard a grunt from near the bed it was the girl waking up. 
He went over to her and pulled the covers up more, hiding her naked body from his eyes and speaking. Not today. I won't let you die today, said the unknown woman, her voice firm and determined. Issei blinked, confused. A beam of light had just struck him, and the last thing he remembered was falling to the ground. Now, he was in a strange room, lying on a bed, and a woman he had never seen before was standing over him. Who are you? He asked, his voice hoarse. My name is Rias Gremory, she said, introducing herself. I saved you from that fallen angel. You were lucky I was nearby. Issei tried to sit up, but a sharp pain in his side made him gasp. He looked down and saw that he had been wounded. Don't move too much, Rias warned him. You were hit by a light spear. I managed to heal most of the damage, but some lingering effects may still exist. You need to rest. Issei nodded, feeling grateful. He didn't understand what was happening, but he could tell Rias was powerful and influential. He wondered why she had bothered to save him. Why did that angel attack me? He asked. Rias hesitated for a moment before answering. She was a low-class fallen angel, she said. They're not very strong, but they can be dangerous if they feel threatened. She must have thought you were a threat. Issei frowned. He didn't feel very threatening. In fact, he had always thought of himself as pretty average. What happens now? He asked. Rias smiled. Well, as of right now, you're my servant, she said. But don't worry, my family treats our servants like family members. You'll be well taken care of. Issei didn't know what to say. He had never been anyone's servant before and wasn't sure what it would entail. But he was too tired and sore to argue. Okay, he said. Thank you for saving me. Rias nodded and turned to leave. Rest up, she said. We'll be late for school if we don't hurry. Issei watched her go, feeling a strange mix of confusion and curiosity. He had no idea what he was getting into, but he thought his life would be much more enjoyable. Issei felt a mixture of emotions as he watched Rias leave the room. On the one hand, he was grateful for her concern and offer of help. On the other hand, he was frustrated that he still didn't know who the man who had attacked him was, and he was also anxious about the thought of going back to school. He took a deep breath and tried to shake off his worries. Well, that plan won't work. Now, I need to focus on finding out as much as I can from Rias and find out where that man is so I can eradicate him, he thought to himself as he left for school. As he walked into class, he was greeted by friendly faces and warm welcomes. He smiled and greeted everyone back, feeling a sense of belonging. Welcome, Prince. Can we do anything for you? Said a few girls, giggling. Master, please teach us more about the women, all the guys except for three said. Issei laughed and shook his head. Hello, everyone. I'm fine for the moment, but thank you for the offer. You guys can meet me at lunch, and I'll teach you more, he said with a smile. The teacher approached Issei with a smile and a slight blush. Hello Issei. I hope you had a nice weekend, she said. Hello miss. I did, thank you for asking, Issei replied. Oh, look, the prince is flirting with the teacher, said a few girls, giggling. Issei chuckled. I'm not flirting, just being friendly, he said, bowing respectfully. The master knows how to talk to women, lads. We may one day surpass the master in talking to women, said a confident guy. Well, now that I have made a scene, I should probably take my seat miss. I hope you have a nice day. I thought you might like this, Issei said, leaving a strawberry cheesecake on the side of her desk, smiling at her one last time and walking over to his seat. Thank you Issei. That's very sweet of you, the teacher said with a full-on blush. Okay, class, let's begin the lesson. Who can tell me the 14 times table? Said the teacher. And just like that, the class began. Issei felt a sense of relief and happiness as he settled into his seat. He knew that he still had a lot to learn and face, but for now, he was content with being surrounded by friends and feeling like he belonged. Thank you, said the teacher with a full-on blush as Issei finished his massage. She stood up from her chair and walked towards the whiteboard. Okay, class, let's begin. Who can tell me the 14 times table? She asked. I can, teach, said Issei, raising his hand. Very well, Issei. Go on then, up to 14, she said, gesturing for him to come to the front of the class. 14, 28, 42, 56, 70, 84, 98, 112, 126, 140, 154, 168, 182, 196, said a confident Issei. Excellent job, Issei. Now, can anyone answer this math question? The teacher asked as she moved over to the whiteboard and wrote down the problem. 12 plus 8, 56 3, 20 plus 4 equals. The class fell silent as they tried to solve the problem. Issei couldn't help but notice that some of the students were struggling. Maybe you should try giving them an easier one, teach, he said with a chuckle. The teacher smiled and turned to face him. The answer is 1340. Correct again, Issei. Can you stay after class, please? 
she asked. Sure thing, teach, Issei replied with a smile. All right, the rest of you, turn to page 54 in the maths book and do all the questions until you get to page 57. If you don't complete that today, then you can do that for homework. If you have done that, then you don't have homework, so the choice is yours, said the teacher. Okay, miss, said the girls. What? That's not fair. Three pages in an hour. That's too much, one of the boys complained. If you can't do three pages in an hour, what will the girls think? I'll tell you what they think. They'll think you're not special and won't even look at you, Issei said, already done with the first page. Issei, did you have to say that? The teacher asked with a small smile. Sorry, teach, but I'm trying to get the boys to learn, Issei replied. If the master can do it, we won't lose to him. Come on, guys, let's complete this so we can play football at home and not have to do homework, shouted one of the boys. See, miss. Just a little bit of a nudge, and they'll follow your request, Issei said with a grin. After class, Issei finished the teacher's message and left the classroom. Walking down the hallway, he couldn't help but think about the teacher, Elizabeth. He knew he had feelings for her, but also knew he couldn't act on them. She was his teacher, after all. As he waited for Rias to come pick him up, a man approached him. Is Issei Haidu here? He asked. It's the prince Kiba. Has he come to speak to our other prince? The girls whispered. What does the prince want with our master? The boys asked. I'm Issei Haidu. What can I do for you? Issei asked the man. Kiba, a member of the occult research club, approached Issei Haidu, a second-year student at Kuo Academy, one day during class. Issei, my club president, would like to speak to you, Kiba said. Issei replied with a smile, okay, lead the way. As they left the classroom, Issei struck up a conversation with Kiba. So Kiba, what does one of the great ladies of Kuo want with someone like me? He asked, still smiling. I'm not too sure. I was just told to come and get you, Kiba replied. Well then, I guess I can tell you I'm your new friend. I'm one of Rhea's pawns, or should I say, all of her pawns, Issei revealed confidently. Wait, you took all of her pawn pieces? Kiba exclaimed with a shocked face. Yep, all eight of them, Issei confirmed proudly. You must be strong if you took all eight of them. Do you have a sacred gear or something? Kiba asked. What's a sacred gear? Issei replied, confused. Oh, you don't know, well, I guess you have to wait for the president to inform you of that, Kiba said. As they approached an old building, Issei sensed another person's presence in the room with seals on it. He wondered if his mother would know this vampire child. Upon entering the room, Issei saw two people of interest, one being a half-fallen and the other being an Ekamata. How strange that you like to gather people from all over. I hope you are looking after them, Issei thought to himself. As they settled in, a beautiful woman entered the room and said, Ara Ara, since when do we have a new handsome pawn? Ah, if it isn't the most beautiful of the great ladies of Kuo, Issei said with a smirk. Such a flirt. I like you, the woman replied, pressing against him seductively. Akeno, leave him be. He is my servant, after all, Ria said, entering the room wearing nothing but a towel, causing Issei to blush slightly. Please, old friend, forgive me, but I can't help it. Your sister is alluring, Issei thought to himself. Sorry, Rias, but I can't help it when one of our second years is so cute. Just look at him. He is so handsome, Akeno said, holding Issei tightly with a blush. You are right. It is quite cute, but enough about that. Issei, do you believe in the supernatural world? Rias asked, changing the subject. Yes, I do, Issei replied, shocking everyone in the room. How do you know about it, if I may ask? Rias inquired. My mother was a devil before her death, Issei said, with tears in his eyes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Issei, Ria said, pulling him into a warm embrace. Thank you, Rias. Sorry about that. Men shouldn't cry in front of beautiful girls. It's not gentlemanlike, Issei said, wiping away his tears. She reminds me so much of her mother. I wish I could see you again, Venelana. I need you now more than ever. I can't deal with this pain anymore. You always knew how to make me happy when I was sad, Issei thought. Well, what did you want me for, Rias? I know it's not just for a chat, Issei said, breaking the silence. Well, I'm going to explain how everything works, and then we can see about your power if that's okay, Ria said, getting down to business. Sure, I can show you my power now if you like, said Issei, eager to prove himself to his new companions. Ria's and her team nodded, curious to see what Issei was capable of. Annihilation Ray, said Issei, and a small black dot started to form in his hand. He fired it at the wall, and it disintegrated in an instant. Wow, that's impressive, said Kiba, impressed by Issei's power. I could make it bigger, but that would endanger all of us in this building, said Issei, aware of the danger of using such a powerful attack. Well, we'll have to keep that in mind for future battles with strays, said Rias with a confident smile. 
I will gladly help kill strays for you, master, bow to say. You don't need to bow to me, is say. As I said to you, I treat my servants as family. We don't bow to anyone, said Rias kindly. Sorry about that, said Issei, feeling a bit embarrassed. Alright, let's move on. Allow me to introduce my team, said Rias, gesturing to her companions. Issei nodded his head, eager to learn more about Rias' team. My name is Rias Gremory, and I am the king. The person next to me is my queen and best friend, Akeno Himejima, and that one on the couch is my rook, Kaneko Taoju. The one who brought you is Kibuyudo, my knight. Say hello, everyone, said Rias. Hello, handsome, said Akeno, winking at Issei. Sup, said Kaneko, giving Issei a small smile. Yo, said Kiba, nodding and greeting. Nice to meet you all, said Issei, overwhelmed by all the attention. Now, let's get down to business. Do you know what sacred gears are? Asked Rias. Issei nodded, feeling more confident now that he was on familiar ground. Ifs from God, I would assume. If I am not mistaken, they are also classified, the strongest being the Longinus class. But the names of them, I don't know, said Issei. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, I'll explain all the Longinus class sacred gears to you now. Listen well, said Rias. Issei listened intently as Rias explained each of the sacred gears, feeling a mix of awe and apprehension at their power. Any questions? said Rias after explaining the mission details to the team. Wow, that's a lot of information I need to process all at once. Can you get me a book on all of them? They sound fascinating, Issei replied, feeling a bit overwhelmed. The book suddenly appeared out of the air as if on cue and landed right before Issei. The title, For My Precious Grandson. The book on all of my sacred gears, signed God of the Bible. Wow, that's a cool looking book, it just appeared for you. What does the title say? Spoke Rias, intrigued. A book on all of the sacred gears, Issei replied, grateful for his grandfather's unexpected gift. Thank you grandfather. I will cherish this, thought Issei with a smile. Right, all, let's move on a bit. We have a stray hunt, spoke Rias, getting the team back on track. The team nodded in agreement and prepared to embark on their mission. Issei kept the book close to his heart, feeling more confident with the knowledge he had gained. Right, all, let's move on a bit. We have a stray hunt, spoke Rias. Yes, president, said everyone. Scene change abandoned building. Right, all, let's move on a bit. We have a stray hunt, spoke Rias. Yes, president, said everyone. Scene change abandoned building. I also know the reason why. I can feel chills all over my body. That's because of the presence of the enemy, and its intent to kill became much more substantial. The low voice is coming from below the ground. Stray devil vaser. We are here to eliminate you. Spoke Rias. The unnatural laughter echoes around us. Ah, I now clearly understand. This isn't a laugh of a human. It's also not a laugh of a devil that I know of. The lower body of the aberration has four stocky legs with sharp claws. Is it a serpent tail? Wow. The bottom is moving on its own. From the size of it, it's more than five meters tall. If it stands on its hind legs, won't it be much taller? Either way, it's an aberration. Is this also a devil? Is this what my father's creations have been coming in only 500 years? What a shame I will be the one to end this in the name of my father. Rias called it a stray devil. What a shame she had so much potential to be a powerful devil, thought Issei. Leaving your master's side and revolting as you please definitely deserve extinction. In the name of Duke Gremory, I will gladly eradicate you. You are a little girl. I will tear your body. Udo. Yes. Gibba, who was near me, sprints ahead as soon as Rias orders him. Fast. He's swift. I can't even respond to it. Ice, I will continue from the previous talk, Rhea says. Udo's position is night. Its trait is speed. Those who become a knight have their speed increased. The monster is using its spear to attack, but it doesn't seem like it will hit. And Udo's ultimate weapon is swords. Gibba stops, and suddenly, he is holding onto a European sword. He took it from the sheath, and the drawn blade reflected the moon's light. Gibba abruptly vanishes again. The next moment, the scream of the monster echoes. When I looked, both of its arms were clipped from its torso along with the spear. This is Udo's power. The speed you can't follow with your eyes and sword skills of an expert. By merging these two, he becomes the fastest knight. Spoke Rias with passion in her voice as she cared greatly for everyone. There is a shadow near the monster's legs wait. That's Kaneko-chan. Next is Kaneko. She is a rook. The trait of a rook is its. Am and see act. The enormous monster tries to stomp on Kaneko-chan. Hey Kaneko-chan. Hey, she's in trouble was all Issei could say before the monster's foot didn't hit the ground. It wasn't able to stomp completely. The girl with a tiny body is lifting the monster's foot. The trait of a rook is simple. Absolute strength. And also very high defense. 
A devil with that caliber can't stomp on Kaneko. It can't crush her. The Neko chan completely lifts the monster. The Neko chan jumps high and punches into the monster's stomach very sharply. The enormous body of the monster gets thrown backwards. Lastly, a Keno. Yes, Rias. Ara Ara, what should I do? The Keno san is laughing while walking towards the monster on the ground after being hit by Kaneko chan. The Keno is a queen. She's the one who is the strongest after me. She is the unbeatable vice president of our club who has all the traits of pawn, knight, bishop, and rook. The monster stares at Akeno san. Akeno san makes a fearless laugh after seeing the monster's gaze. Ara Ara, you still have some energy left in you. Then how about this? Spoke Akeno. Akeno then puts her hands towards the sky. Flash. The next instant, the sky sparkles, and a lightning bolt strikes down the monster. Gaga 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 gaga. The monster gets electrified violently. Its entire body gets charred, and smoke comes out from it. Ara Ara, it looks like you still have some energy. Looks like you can take more. Spoke Akeno with a circuited smile. Flash. Another lightning bolt hit the monster. The monster gets electrified again. It already sounds like it's dying. Even so, Akeno Sen strikes down the third lightning. Akeno Sen's face, while striking down the lightning bolt, looks scary and cold even though she is smiling. Iwa. That person is enjoying it she's laughing, after all. Akeno excels at attacks using demonic powers. She could use natural elements like lightning, ice, and fire. And most of all, she is the supreme sadist. Rias confesses it as if it's nothing. A sadist that's not something you call a sadist. Usually, she's very considerate, but once the battle starts, she won't stop until she calms down. Ice. Akeno is very kind to comrades, so it's not a problem. She even said that you were cute. Next time, get spoiled by her. She will hug you kindly. If 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 How much of my lightning can you take? Right, Monster San. You still can't perish yet, okay? For a few minutes, Akeno San's lightning attacks continue. After Akeno San calms down, Riaz confirms it and nods her head. Riaz, can I finish her off? I want to try out my power, spoke Issei. God, well, normal. I would finish them, but since you want to test that power, I'll allow it just this one time, okay? Said Riaz. Thank you, said Issei as he moved his hand forward, aiming at the stray. He said. Annihilation Ray and a small black ball started to grow more prominent in his hand as it slowly got bigger until Issei thought it was right and shot it at the stray, disintegrating it instantly. Nothing was left. That was for father. You were no devil. You were a pest, that is all. Thought Issei. Thank you for that Riaz that helped me so much, was all Issei said before he passed out cold. Akeno, can you help me take him home? I think he used too much magic. Said Riaz. Ara Ara, I can see my little Kohai houses, said Akeno with a smile. Don't make it even worse, Akeno spoke Riaz. Little did they know, but Issei was awake the whole time. He just wanted to look like he had used all of his magic up with that attack. Time skipped the night before the riser visit. Issei found himself lost in thought. He had been running around all week at Riaz's behest and was exhausted. He couldn't keep up the charade for much longer, and he knew it. He couldn't bear the thought of losing Fia and was afraid that his secret would soon come out. He had to come clean to her before it was too late. As he was lost in thought, he was suddenly interrupted by the appearance of Riaz, who had conjured a magic circle to appear before him. Issei, I'm sorry, but I have no other choice, Riaz said, her voice shaking. It must be you, as Kibba want. He is too loyal to do so. Issei needed clarification. What do you mean, Riaz? What's going on? I need you to take my purity now, Riaz said, shocking Issei. Issei was taken aback. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I need you to take my purity, Issei. Please, it's not hard. You need to put it here, and then we can be done with it, and I won't have to marry that man, Riaz said, tears streaming down her face. Hey now, Riaz, you can't cry like that. Who is this man? Issei asked. His name is Riser Phoenix, and he is a notorious playboy. He's my soon-to-be husband, and there's nothing I can do about it, Riaz said, her voice full of despair. Just then, another magical circle appeared, and a woman with silver hair and a maid's dress emerged. Issei's heart skipped a beat when he saw her. Rafia, what are you doing here? Riaz asked. I've come to collect you, my lady. It would be best if you did not lower yourself to someone unworthy of you, Grafia said. Well, that hurts, Fia, Issei said with a sad smile. Issei? Grafia said, her eyes widening in surprise. Hello, my love. Did you miss me? Issei said, his voice full of warmth and affection. Issei. Grafia exclaimed, jumping into his loving embrace. Tears streamed down her face as she hugged him tightly. I'm here, Fia. I'm sorry I've been away for so long, but I have something to tell you. 
I'm coming back, Issei said, looking deeply into Grafia's eyes. You're not joking, are you? You're not trying to fool me? Grafia said, her voice trembling with emotion. I'm telling the truth, Fia. I'm coming back, and you can thank this little one here, Issei said, gesturing towards Rias. Why are you pointing at Rias? What does she have to do with this? Grafia asked. Well, she has a problem and came to me for help. Though she isn't getting the help she wants, I will help her deal with this spoiled phoenix. Please inform the phoenix that someone has challenged him to a fight, Grafia, Issei said, his voice full of determination. Wait, Issei, you can't do that. As your master, I cannot allow this, said Rias, her voice laced with concern. Issei held out his hands, showing his pawn pieces, a look of determination etched on his face. Rias and Grafia gasped in shock and surprise. Issei, how did you do that? Are you not dying? If you don't have them, you shouldn't be alive right now, said Rias, her voice trembling with emotion. Grafia's anger flared up. What does she mean by that, Issei? Explain to me why you should not be alive right now, she demanded. Dia, please calm down. She's just saying that because I should have died when a light spear struck me through my chest, but as you know, light spears don't hurt me, so it doesn't matter. Right now, I'm fine, see? He shows his chest, making Grafia blush and Rias gasp. Issei, don't show her your chest, said a jealous Grafia, pinching his cheek. Ah, Fia, is that a hint of jealousy in your voice? If it is, it's so cute, said Issei with a grin, making Grafia blush even more. Baka, said Grafia, playfully pinching his cheek again. Grafia, how do you know Issei? said Rias, still in shock. Well, that's a bit complicated, said Grafia, her eyes darting between Rias and Issei. How so? said Rias, her curiosity piqued. It's because of who I am, Rias, said Issei, his voice low and serious. And who are you really? said Rias, her eyes widening in surprise. My real name is Issei Satan Lucifer, the third son of Satan Lucifer and his second wife, Mickey, who was one of the 72 pillar clans, the Haidu clan, said Issei, his tone firm and resolute. You are Lucifer, said Rias, her eyes widening even further. Yes, I am. And I'm also the king of the devils and the leader of the current devil kings, said Issei, his voice booming with pride. Rias fell back onto the bed, her mind reeling from the revelation. That's enough information from me tonight, Grafia. Please inform the right people about this, but don't tell them who it is until the day of the game. I want it to be a surprise for when I return to the underworld, smiled Issei, his eyes twinkling mischievously. At once, my love, said Grafia, kissing his cheek right where she had pinched it. She disappeared in a flash of magic. Now then, Rias, I know you might have questions. I will happily answer all of them after the game with Riser, which I hope will only be a day, so until then, I will be training in my castle. I will inform my team and get them to come and train you and Sona Peerage. I hope you both can learn from them because the devil faction will need you all, spoke Issei, his voice brimming with confidence. I'm sorry Issei. I didn't Rias trailed off, unsure of what to say. It's okay, Rias. I understand why you didn't try and save me. It's fine. I'm okay, and you are also okay, so there are no hard feelings. But next time you see something like that, please inform me, and I'll come and deal with it as a Satan class. I'm not someone to trifle with, said Issei, his voice firm and commanding. Just then, a magical circle formed near Issei's ear, and he spoke. It's time to get everyone ready. I want you all here by tomorrow, said Issei. I'll inform everyone, spoke the unknown man. Great. I'll see you all soon, then. With that, Issei got rid of the magical circle, and was surprised to see another one, from which Grafia came out. She looked at both of them and said, it's all set up the Phoenix family was annoyed that I could tell them who it was, but Riser, being who he is, accepted it and has said he will kill whoever it is anyway, spoke Grafia, now sitting down in the lap of Issei, who was blushing at this. Thank you, Fia, Issei said, kissing Grafia's cheek, making her blush. Now that stuff is out of the way, I want to ask you something, Fia, said Issei. What might that be, dear? said Grafia. Would you like to be my queen and rule the underworld with me? said Issei with a hint of worry. Yes, I would love to be your queen. I wouldn't want anything else than to be your queen, spoke Grafia, kissing him on the lips while her body was right on top of his, making him blush. Well then, I believe I should use this on you, he took out his queen's piece, which was also a mutated piece, shocking Grafia and Rias. Is that a mutated queen? spoke Rias. Yes, it is. All of my piece was mutated, spoke Issei. So that is the power of a Satan class being, spoke Rias, surprised by the power Issei had. Well, not every Satan class being has this many. As you know, your brother doesn't have that many, he has what, six, if I remember correctly, said Issei. Wow, said Rias. Indeed, Issei is a mighty devil. He did fight in the Great War with his dad and grandfather, spoke Grafia, holding on to Issei. 
Wait, who is Issei's grandfather? Said Rissa. Out of the Bible, spoke Issei. Wait, doesn't God hate devils? Said Rias. Not really. He just wanted his children to do what they wanted. He never hated them. He just had a falling out with them. A few years back, they all spoke and talked and made up, but when the Great War happened, it was due to some rogue devils and angels and one fallen who kick-started it. They all had to do something, so they fought in it not to kill each other off, but to stop the war and keep the peace, said Issei. Wow, I didn't know everyone is told a very different story about the Great War, said Rias. Well, once everyone gets here tomorrow, we can talk more about this if you like, but for now, I need my sleep, said Issei with a tired voice. Noticing this, Grafia left the room to go and make the bed. Right, I should probably get going. I'm sorry again, my lord. I leave you to it, spoke Rias, bound to Issei, who only smiled and lifted her head and said, you don't need to do any of those, Rias, when we are in private. But for any official meeting, please do that as we don't want people to think I have favorites now, do we? Making Rias smile. Very well, Issei. I leave you to it, said Rias as she left in a magical circle back to her home. Well then, I guess Grafia is staying over tonight, said Issei as he moved up the stairs to his bedroom and saw Grafia in her nightie, waiting for him to come to bed. Well, someone is impatient, it seems. Did you miss snuggling with me that much? Said Issei as he got into bed and brought Grafia into a loving embrace, drifting off to sleep. Well guys, looks like we've reached the end of the part 1. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.